interesting times. Um, first, yes. of, first of all, because everyone in Britain is online, because no one's working, our connection is a little bit dodgy. So uh, if anyone goes a little bit funny, we'll just like wait a second and hopefully it will all even out because... Uh, yes. Yeah. Fingers <sighs> crossed. It's interesting times. So before we came on air, so to speak, uh, we were just um, saying that we're eating quite a lot. Now, Emma, bless her, go get your box. Now, Cadbury's milk tray, for those who don't know, is a selection box of chocolates quite common in the UK. Yes, there's normally quite a few in it. Well, one would think. Now, Emma doesn't like, controversial I know, does not like fruit and chocolate. So the no. strawberry cream no, got taken a out. Yeah. Strawberry cream got taken out, the orange truffle got taken out. I was allowed them. I have not eaten them, but I was allowed them. Then she left with the box with everything else after because first of all it was meant to be if i have a chocolate you have a chocolate but i'm not a massive fan of chocolate so i was like i don't really want a chocolate just have one and then when she realized that she could just have the box yeah she went for it went for it bloody went for it to be fair i think half of the country is probably <laughs> doing there were two the ways in that Whereas look, I went healthy dates. Dates? I know we could. Normally, I'm so careful with what I eat normally. Like, I only eat like bad things when I'm socializing. And well, all I eat really now you're, you're, you're supposed to be social distancing. Distance yourself exactly. from the chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I have to have like, all my chocolates here. I can't like, go out and have cookie dough anymore. Well, it's true though. It's like me and Mags, we've literally, so my sister's staying with me at the moment. And we've literally gone, now we're going to behave today. We're not going to eat anything bad. Within 10 minutes, there's like crisps open, chocolate bars, yeah. bottles of wine, gin. It's just, it's carnage. It's yeah. carnage. Look, you can even see my face. Look, you can see I have gained weight. I'm going to have to go and like run a Is marathon. That the, the wine cheeks there? Or the cake cheeks even dinner, even dinner, like we'll go, we'll have like one healthy meal and then that's it. It's back to pizza and crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, I Emma is very good us? at wanting to eat away problems. Emma's very oh, much God. like, I'm sad, pizza. And I'm a I have, eater, yeah. Mm, yeah. And I have no self control. So someone says to me, hey, should we order some waffles? And I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. That, that's pretty much saying to me, I'm quite good. If I'm on my own and I don't think about it, I'm yeah. fine. But the minute somebody says, do you want this? I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I don't even think it's rude. It's just like, yep, yeah, I'll have it. Because then FOMO comes in, because then I think I might miss out. I don't know whether or not this, this Easter egg is going to last till Easter. I don't think it will. We've already then... eaten six. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got this because just before lockdown, I went into Tesco and this was reduced to two pounds and I thought mm. I'm having it so I bought it and then the next week during actual lockdown I saw my giant kinder surprise chocolate egg and I was like oh, having that now that I've eaten half of and then Emma That's wanted just, some how can you eat half toy I don't I'm not a huge fan of chocolate if it was a cake oh. like if there was a Victoria sponge in here it would be gone so that's my uh, thing chocolate biscuits. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're biscuit, oh, God, biscuits. biscuits and cakes mm. there's a pack of just plain digestives in the cupboard and every day i'm like i could just eat all of them now i find i'm going through phases so like week one because i've been here for three weeks in in the house week one was cookies that was what we went through so i've discovered these pineapple and coconut cookies in marks and spencers oh, they sound good. Delish. Anyway, so uh, and salted caramel cookies. So that was that was week one. Week two was uh, Easter eggs. We went through a thing about every time we went anywhere near the shop, get a couple of Easter eggs. <laughs> and it, they reduced them all, didn't they? It's yeah. like, that'll, keep, that'll keep us going. So yeah, we've had them. And uh, this week has been all about crisps. So, I don't so know it's what next savory week. week. Yeah. It so I'm hoping next like... week. Next week's gonna have to be just lettuce. Because that's the only way I'm going to survive this. It's going to have to be 
lettuce it is a little bit like the great british bake-off like we're having weeks like our first week was pizza and our second week was chocolate and our third week i think funny enough is being crisps because everyone mm. was eating crisps and emma was like i desperately need crisps so when i was out i you know when when you go shopping in the uk at the moment they recommend only one person goes if at all mm. possible so as the driver i'm the person going shopping and I am literally walking around the supermarket taking pictures of all the aisles going, what do you want? What crisps do you want? What chocolate do you I, want? What this I'm usually the one who buys stuff and who's like very picky with what we're buying, like, you know, what mm. brands and what deals we're getting and stuff like that. So poor Amanda's kind of like, right, what about this? this you know, I, think, I think that is so many people are doing that. Was we, I went to Tesco's the other day and I was whizzing around and there were so many people with their earphone in going, oh, yeah. chicken nuggets. Do you want chicken nuggets? No, chicken nuggets. Yeah. Nuggets. <laughs> chicken nuggets. And you're like, good God, just buy the nuggets. <laughs> I saw I saw the best thing on Tuesday. I saw um this this guy who was quite I know, he's sort of in his forties, fifties, with his phone, obviously FaceTiming with his mother, mm. but he was FaceTiming, so it was him. And he's going, what do you think? And she's like, I can only see you. And he's like, no, look at the screen. She's like, I am. <laughs> and I was like, oh, love. And then bless him, he was doing this. And obviously the camera, and he went like that. And she, oh. I was like, oh, love, there's a bug oh. for that. But, you know, oh, social okay. distancing, I didn't want to get too close. So I was just like, I'll just no. enjoy it from afar. Exactly. You were standing exactly. up in the fruit aisle screaming, turn that camera or switch the button. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's so hard. Rude though isn't it it's so hard because it's one of those it's one of those things like i'm quite i'm quite like i will go over and say to the bloke just press that button you yeah. know what i mean and i will get in his i'll get in his space and i'll press that button so yeah. and now i have to go no i can't stop don't don't attempt to in, don't attempt to speak to him just keep <laughs> moving keep moving yeah it's really weird because yeah. i am the sort i am the sort of person who just stands there and chats if somebody's standing next to me in a queue i'm talking to them yeah, um, yeah really I did weird. the um, scan and shop at Tesco where you walk around mm. scan your own shopping. And when I went to the thing, uh, Emma had decided she needed some wine to get through this tough period. So I was like, oh, Angel. Yeah, Rachel. I'm going to get the, you know, is this person over 18? And I, like, I thought I'll stand back. My God, I was nearly out the store. I was being so like considerate. I was just like, I'm so sorry that you have to go. I'm so, I was like, you know. <laughs> And at that moment, obviously, you want to cough as well. So it's just like I'm sitting there going, Oh, God, if you want to cough, it's just awful. You're like, No, I can't cough. I can't cough in public. They don't think I've got it. Everyone's like, quarantining right. me. It's madness. Absolute madness. It is a bit mad. But as authors, yeah. we are all used to working from home. So this should be mm -hmm. a doddle, shouldn't it? Well, I think, especially for you and me, Amanda, because we're both introverts. And we both tend to socialise online when we do socialise, which is rare, to be mm. fair. Um, so in, its, in a lot of ways, things are just kind of carrying on as normal, other than that we can't go to the cinema, can't go out to coffee with like our one in-person friend. <laughs> our local in-person friend. We have many in-person friends. It's just one that lives local. Well, one who lives local <laughs> one who in we want to see. We live in. <laughs> Hi, Harriet. But yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I think um, I think like going to the gym, not going to the gym is probably the biggest issue for me. Um, but I'm I'm working out from home and you know, causing mayhem in our small house. So Amanda has to hide as I'm trying to work out in different rooms. Yeah, Emma's got this thing where when she works out, she needs to keep her. You know, if you're bothering to exercise, you want to keep your heart rate up. So I'll come mm. downstairs and she'll be like, <laughs> like can't talk to you because I get my heart, and then like she'll run off and I'll be like. <laughs> How rude! But yeah. Well, we we have, we have worked out. So well, we haven't worked out at all. <laughs> we keep talking about working out, and then I think Max did it one day. I, I haven't really bothered. I punched Trumpy a couple of times. That was about it. But I've worked out. Okay, my stairs. I've got thirteen steps. If I walk up and down those one thousand and six times, I've climbed the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Well, there you um, go. That could be my challenge. Yeah. Obviously not in challenge. one. It ain't going to happen in one day. It'll be like say, 10 climbs a day. Might take about, well, it might take the entire time we're quarantined. I don't know. But 
you know yes. and this is what they i'm thinking we could do yeah little set little targets you can work it out just go online how many steps to climb and it tells you on google and then you can just you know count your stairs up and down them yeah, stairs, uh, like running around inside, yeah. uh, which I do. Out in the garden, um, <laughs> you've got one, running around the circles. A lot of people are getting these, which is um, a resistance bands, yeah. which are awesome. Yeah. Um, they don't cost much, and obviously you can take them with you, and you can use them anywhere. Um, and yeah, there's, there's plenty of things. You, I mean, you can lift water bottles. There's loads of like calisthenics, so body weight Did exercises. Did you see you the guy do? who's run no. a marathon on his balcony? No. no, I heard about it though. A That's four a cool foot idea. balcony. It's four foot wide. He's run a marathon. I'm just like, brilliant. That's you crazy. Can... I can't see how you get your heart rate up, but fair enough. Go for it. You know. I can't I'm, see how I'm you don't thinking I might just turning. run around the garden, give it a go. Mm. I'm strictly unbanned from running because I'm not supposed to do any high impact stuff. But mm. it is hard on the joints. That's what I'm yeah. finding as well. I'm thinking a gentle jog rather than a run. This, yeah, this carcass is never going to run. It's never going to be a sprint. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm quite good at a sprint. Anything long distance, no. So it's going to be a very gentle jog around the garden. Yeah. And it's supposed to be quite nice weather this weekend. So, you know, oh, good. that might be the opportunity to... My brain just went, when's the weekend? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is like that, isn't it? I said to Max the other day, is it Wednesday? She went, yeah. I was like, you sure? She's like, yeah, I think it is. I think it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It was like back and forth. We didn't have to look on my phone. It was Wednesday, yeah. but yeah, I've lost all track time. Have you been filling out your, your calendar, Amanda? Your little checkbox of how many well, days have, of our prison so, sentence we've done. Oh, let me just remove the Easter egg from the top of it. Um, I made a little uh, staying home is the new going out, and so I will. I made this and I added it to a couple of uh, couple of places online and I will admit that I have dropped the ball three times and had to like mark off more than one day at a time because I was like oh. where the hell are we and literally as I moved it out of the way in order to prepare for this show I uh, I had to mark off April the 1st and April the 2nd that was the only way I really knew it was April the 3rd because in my <laughs> head I thought it was still April the 2nd it's mad isn't it it's mad and it's good in some ways because I seem to be behind and then I'm pleasantly surprised that, oh, it's Friday, not Thursday. And it's mm. the second. No, it's the third, mm. not the second. Well, see, I used, in my old job, I used to have to write the date 50 times a day. Every single piece of paper had the date written on it. So I always knew what day it was. And then so when I stopped working there, I did lose track of time quite quickly. Yeah. And then I've never really bothered with it that much. But I've always had a rough idea. Whereas actually now I have no idea. I've got like, I don't even know sometimes if it's April or March. I'm really, mm. you to be know. honest, since I've been a full time author, I've had no idea what the day or the yeah. week or the month is. I don't all. write it anymore. I don't, it doesn't really factor into my life. The only time I start thinking about it is when I start thinking about timetables and schedules and when I want to release books. And then I go, mm. oh, it's a week until Easter or whatever. Mm. By the way, it's not a week until Easter, anyone listening. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just don't know. So for that, it's not really changed much for me. Mm. Um, but yeah, I used to be in a job where I had to write the date a lot and I had to be very much aware of deadlines and dates and things like that and what was coming up. Mm. And yeah, the second I stopped doing that, I just lost all concept of time. Mm. I mean, the, the, the date, I don't know. I, I kind of know somewhat the days of the week because I have things, because I live in a different country from where I grew up, my family back in Sweden obviously contact me on certain days. So I hear from my father on Fridays and I speak to my mother and my sister on Sundays. So those days kind of mean I need to know at least them. Um, but other than that, it's been years of, what, what day is it? Mm. It's the third? How's the third? So yeah, I think right, with that right as well, we were kind of think, yeah. set up for quarantine. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I think actually this crisis, I've known more what the day is now than I normally do. Like if this was mm. just any other month or any other period of time, I would not, I would probably not be that aware that we were in April, but now I'm quite aware that we're in April because I'm like, I would quite like April, even though my birthday's in April, I'd quite like April to be over so that we could- Hurry up! Yeah, I would just kind maybe. of get back to whatever normal will be. <clears throat> well, anyway, I, I thought just, as, yeah. we, as we are in this unique situation that we work from home all the time, we could give some sort of tips and bits of advice for those people who find themselves working from home for the very first time 
or people who are just at home and wondering what the hell to do. So I don't know, Emma, do you want to start with any tips you've got from being a, a full time work from home person? Uh, well, I'd say set a schedule and, and try and stick to it as much as you can. Um, and that was actually something that we heard from, of, of all people, the, the leader of the Catholic Church of Britain said, um, try to think of your life the way a, a monk or a nun would and have set like tasks to do every day and stick to doing them at that time. Even if you feel like this isn't necessary or I'd rather be on the sofa watching TV or just checking my phone, do those tasks so that you have kind of like a set schedule to keep to. Um, and that's kind of like how I've had my life as well. But I think especially being somewhat mentally ill, I need to kind of have that structure. So I always make sure that I have a set goal for how much I'm going to work. And I do that at the start of the day. And then the rest of the day, I can do my workouts and the house chores. And I kind of like have a schedule for that too. Um, just to kind of like give things a shape and have something to stick to so I can keep myself accountable. Um, and I think that's something that could work a lot for people who have been, I've, I've been contacted by a few people kind of going like, how do you stay disciplined? It's like, well, I have a schedule that I stick to and, you know, beat myself up if I don't stick to it. <laughs> yeah. So, so schedule for you is mainly your, uh, your key. Yeah. What about you, Claire? I would say, <clears throat> so, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm not really disciplined. But I've been more disciplined since we've been in this situation because I now can't go and do the things that I would normally skive off to do. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you work office hours, nine to five, then work them at home. Have your proper lunch breaks, have your coffee breaks, cigarette breaks, whatever you would normally do at work in the office for the days that you would normally work and just carry on as normal as you can. Um, obviously you can skive off an hour earlier or whatever no one's going to notice but you know try to just because eventually you're going to have to go back to work and if you've just been sitting around on the sofa for six weeks it's going to be a That's bit tricky trying to get back into that up at six routine and you know uh into the office kind of thing so yeah i would say get up at your usual time if you get up at six o'clock in the morning for a work day get up at six o'clock in the morning now mm. do everything as you would normally do and then enjoy your weekends with whatever you can, you know, as you, as you say, you've got to find things that fit into where you live. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, maybe you can do a bit of gardening or just do a gym, take the gym work out into the garden. But if you don't, if you're in a flat, you're going to have to kind of come up with, you know, jigsaw puzzles and painting, whatever, yeah. whatever you can do. But I think it is just a matter of um, just use your imagination, come up with, and it, give anything a go and this is a time as well to try something new learn the language yeah you know yeah so. i think for me i've got i've got three top tips yeah, Ooh, yeah. that's one organized of, one, of, one of them emma's already said to schedule and it plays into what you say as well claire i think it's really important to keep yourself on some kind of a time schedule if you had a time schedule at work, like Claire says, then keep to it. If you didn't have a time schedule, or you're, or you're coming from a, a job that you absolutely can't do, and now you're, mm. you know, literally spending all day doing doing nothing, or have the opportunity to spend all day doing nothing, I think schedule is so important because it gives you that bit of normality that we're really missing. So for me, I I have sort of several kind of schedules. I schedule things for each day. And then I schedule things for the week and the month so that I can see progress building up. So for me, I write books, which means over a period of time, those books grow. You know, the amount of writing I do grows into a novel so I can actually see something coming at the end. Even if I'm sitting there writing and I'm feeling a bit down and miserable, I know that that is getting into the big plan that by this date, I'm going to have a book out of that. So that helps for me. The second thing is to uh, to be kind to yourself and if one day you're really not feeling your schedule that's okay because i think we all have yeah. those moments now where you just think i can't and if you just can't then you just can't if it goes on for a few days then i think you need to drag yourself out of it but if you do just for a certain day think i can't learn my language today then that's fine be kind to yourself and the third thing which is really useful for me is either 
turn off or curate the news and social media that you're viewing because i've noticed a certain platforms i don't want to be on at the moment because it's all conspiracy theories and negativity and i don't want to hear that there's uh, the news is just t- the you know i made a joke what well, a month ago that you know it's the coronavirus show and it still is and it's going to be like that for a very long time and there's only so much that you can you can take of that so i think it's because they time- only ever yeah. all they ever do is concentrate on the negative headline yeah They never go, and today, 50,000 people were cured. Today, no. Let's just talk about how many people died. And it's like, actually, you know, can you not try and entertain us in a different way with this? Mm -hmm. There's a a way of it. And they do not think they all sound like they're very excited about having to tell you this really negative, horrible Um, news. They have these, like, bloody graphs. And they're like, you know, there's like 50,000 people died today. And if we have, you know. You know, doubles this in the next day, it will be up here. And they're, and they're all, it's as if they're t- talking about the football results or, yeah. you know, something really exciting that we should all be like, yes. Yeah. Like, actually, There's that strange thing died. where we're ranking countries together. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know. <laughs> Who's doing best? It's like, oh, win? Win? Will it be take... Italy? Will it be America? Uh, yeah. They have very different populations, very different political structures, very different social structures. They're incredibly, you, you know, oh, you can't. Yeah. And, you know, to say that, you know, we're on a trajectory with whoever. Mm. Yeah, that gives the scientists an idea of what may be coming. But, you know, Bob down the road does not need to know how many people have died in X, Y and Z because that doesn't have any relevance to what's going to happen in the UK. Well, all what is doing nice is, is the uh, we watch uh, BBC Breakfast in the morning mm. with, our, with our breakfast um, and they started doing um, Half Hour Hero or something like that. Yeah. Where they talk about people who, um, who are doing something good we're doing something for others mm. and talk to and just workers nice, and yeah. so on um so mm. they do that for half an hour and just have the positive kind of like this is how people are getting to be together this is how people are helping mm. um so that was actually really nice and i was like yeah we need some of that and the bbc actually yeah. do two live news news things they have a live feed which is everything that's happening and they also have one that's for positive news only so that's been quite nice but again it is still all coronavirus stuff so it's like you know this person's done this wonderful thing and you know taking medicine around to old gladys but you know the reason for that is because if old gladys goes out and gets coronavirus gladys is a goner so you know it's it's yeah positive but it's still bloody miserable yes exactly emma can i just ask what are you gay for exactly <laughs> books <laughs> That's a question your wife doesn't ask you very often. Ah, oh, in books. I, I, I've not seen that t-shirt. And for the longest time, I thought it said gay oh. for boobs. <laughs> well, that's that would be, but that, I would have that one. Yeah, I, I, was, I want the one that where says where gay I'm for boobs. That's, okay. that's not very Emma-like. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm notorious for being very bad at saying words that are not bad words. <laughs> Naughty but, words Emma cannot say. They, is it, for someone who writes sex scenes without blinking, I cannot say words like that without getting really embarrassed. But anyway, no, it definitely says books, but I've been wearing a hoodie all day because it's been cold, except for my office, which is always very hot, which is why I'm always... Because she's gay for boobs. So yeah. Gay for boobs. I'm going to change it for that now. Yeah, sorry. Um, anyway, I, I right. So we've talked about working from home. Mm. So with working from home comes a little bit of isolation, not as much as this, but we are used to a little bit of isolation. Does anyone have any top tips for dealing with isolation and feeling alone? I'll start with Claire this time. I would. Well, obviously, I use things like this Zoom to talk to people, which I think most people are doing now is the video calling but i would think i would do things like plan ahead with nice things so know what know today what you're going to be doing tomorrow as a kind of you know tomorrow i'm going to do i don't know a jigsaw i'm going to take my hour walk and i'm going to do some painting and i'm going to spend an hour learning my greek sign language whatever it is you're doing um and just sort of try and have something to look forward to or have those I'm going to call so-and-so tomorrow. I'm going to be speaking to my best friend, my mum, my dad, whoever it is. And just kind of, so you've always got something to look forward to because otherwise you can just be sitting there going, I'm bored. 
Yeah. You know, and that's the problem. You've got to keep yourself from being bored. Yeah. Focus on it's the doing. Too easy to just, do. Yeah. It's too easy to just end up, you know, turning Disney Plus on and laying on the sofa and never leaving the room. Yeah. You know, Let's that's the evening long, yeah. time in this mm-hmm. house. <laughs> I'm introducing Max to Marvel. I mean, seriously. Where's she? Your sister's missed Marvel. She's not watched Marvel. She's not watched Star Wars. I mean, we, she's got a serious education coming on now. Well, I'm telling thank you. goodness Disney Plus yeah. launched recently yeah, and we're just, all stuck at home. I know. She's like a proper adult. A that does, she's like a proper this. adult. She doesn't do stuff like that. No. So now she's going to. And But we watch. So we're watching uh, Marvel in chronological order, not in the order they f- were filmed. So we started with Captain America yesterday. Yeah. And we're on Captain Marvel today. Very good. So, cool. yeah. So we're doing that every night now. We're going to watch a film. Like as if we're going to the cinema. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. So M, um, M, dealing with isolation. Uh, well, if we're talking about the social aspect of it, uh, I am an introvert. And as most people know, it's, it's hard to get me to do something. I, I need to be adopted by extroverts. <laughs> I, I need an extrovert to go, you, come with me and do this. And I'll be like, okay. And I will enjoy <laughs> that's it. That's why we're friends with Claire. <laughs> that's, that's what we have Claire for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, am, I yeah. said the other day, actually, I'm an introvert that's learned extrovert behaviour. Oh, that's, right. that's what I am. I am, I'm, I am an introvert. I'm not, I'm quite shy in, you know, as my original kind of being. So that's why I will have anxious moments. Like sometimes the phone will ring and I'm like, not answering it. Not doing that today. You know what I mean? But I've learned by jobs and people that I've hung out with to take on extrovert behaviour. That's the same so as I can, me. I am like a chameleon. Which, I, can, I can walk amongst them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about batteries, isn't it? That's the idea that an introvert gets their batteries recharged by being alone and an extrovert yeah. get their batteries recharged by being with other people. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, so you I, can I, be like a, a shy extrovert or a very like brave introvert. You yeah. Know? yeah, I agree Depends with Claire though. I think introvert. if you, for me, if I was ever forced into a situation, I'm an introvert. I'd say I'm actually more introverted than Emma because Emma gets yeah. to the point where she wants to talk to people and I'm like, I, need I don't need to. I'm fine. I can stay... I could stay in this house, not go out and not talk to anyone online for weeks Mm. and be happy. Like just post on Facebook and get like enough feedback for that. I don't need people to the extent that Emma does. But if I'm out Mm. uh, in a work environment, I can just be an extrovert because I know that's what's expected of me and that's what I need to do. But if I have the choice, I wouldn't really socialize with anyone. anyone. No. (laughs) No, that's the dream. You, well, you get your social interaction with like, you know, chatting with me over lunch and then you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, is, that is me done. I'm absolutely fine with that. But then I do enjoy going out and doing stuff when I want to. But, I, you know, I don't need to. I don't feel the need. I don't get to the point mm. where I'm just like, oh, I haven't seen a person for three days. I'm like, haven't I? I haven't even noticed. Yeah. See, I thought I was that. I thought I was the person like, I don't, I'll be fine. I can sit in here. Like I say, I can sit in my office for days and not see anyone. It doesn't bother me never bothered me at all until someone said you can't do it anymore mm. now i'm like I, go, I need to go to the coffee shop i need to go and see my friend i need to go for brunch i need to take Cass out for a ride down the coast why can't i go to the coast i want to just go for a drive why can't i go see my friends i'm like mm. i i need to go out <laughs> and it's like who's like looking for any excuse to why can i go for a drive you know and it's like mm. I don't care. It's my own mental health. I'm going for a drive. I'm just on my own in the car, not bothering anyone. I'll just whiz around the block a few times. I'll be fine. Because mm. I need to have that sing song. I don't do I don't do music in the house. I have music in the car. So I was just like, I need to be yeah, in the car. Music when I work out. But yeah, I know what you no, mean. You need that music I have time. an audio book for working out. Because if I have music on when I've got headphones on, I will start singing. And that's not good in a gym. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Well, you can do it at home now. You and your lonesome. So I have an audio book on. So I only ever sing in the car. So yeah, music. I had to. I would have to like. Well, I'll go to the shops then. I'll just go and pretend I want something, and then not actually get in the queue. I'll just drive back again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's to do. It's to do that. I know. <laughs> I know. But yeah, it's like, harder. This, this really but all the time. 
No, but this shows the point that it is harder for some people than it is for others. Like if you have Amanda who's absolutely fine with going like, okay, social interaction is out. Then Mm -hmm. you have me in the middle and then you have you struggling. Yeah. Some people are even more extrovert, the people who go to work all day and then go out to the pub or a club, club or something. Yeah, they exactly. must be really suffering. And I'm so sorry yeah. for you guys. This must be really hard for you. It yeah. must be like when we're forced to constantly socialize <laughs> and we're yeah. really struggling. That must be what you're going through now when yeah. you can't socialize. I think so, the yeah. thing to remember yeah, there is as so many people are in the same situation now now is the absolute i mean i think it's a fairly okay. safe bet that most people here are going to be uh, online on social media you've probably found mm-hmm. us through social media in some case everyone's in the same boat if you're feeling a little bit down a little bit lonely or whatever just reach out to someone on social media send them a message it's not like they're going to be out it's not like they're, you know, going to be on holiday or anything. They're probably sitting there as bored as you are. And, you know, you might be able to strike up a conversation. I think now is probably your very best time to make some more make online friends. friends. Yeah. So. And about this, you know, the thing like uh, our parents would have done just chatting to neighbours over the fence, mm. you know. Mm. So if you're, if you've got friends who are in like on your street kind of thing and you've got a bit of a front garden, you can sit two metres apart in deck chairs have a conversation i would say actually they're saying you're not allowed to do that why not no they said any like the whole reason for this is like two meters when passing you're you're Mm. not very likely to to spread but if you're two meters facing each other for the course of half hour there's a possibility that you know because the reason that this is so incredibly uh oh the cat's awake the reason this is so incredibly um virulent and getting to everyone is because you need the tiniest 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 particle to become infected and that's that's what the issue is sorry so they are saying that the two meters is kind of meant to be if you're out walking or if you're in a shop but if you're i I don't think anyone's really sticking to that i mean a, a pavement isn't two meters wide so it's really hard to sometimes walk past people two meters apart you know yeah yeah, it's quite difficult. You can only do the best you can do. But I mean, do. if you've got, but what I'm saying is, if you can sit, you know, one end of the path from each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, sit Stick your head out the apart, window. Twenty meters apart. Yeah. Whatever. Shout to each other across the road. You know. Yeah. You can. You can kind of still get that physical interaction with somebody. Go for a walk. You can walk on one side of the road. They can walk on the other, and you can chat across the the, yeah. the carriageway. You know. Um, you there's little things yeah. you can do. I think that you can sort of skirt around the rules yeah i think about, extent, it's about thinking creatively in danger yeah mm-hmm. it's it's thinking creatively but also trying to be incredibly safe because yeah. you know there's no point in all of us being stuck indoors and then you know a handful of people like going like oh yeah well you know there's two meters between us but we're still infecting each other you know because mm. we're all going to be in here longer if we're all yeah, yeah, yeah. i saw some people talking over the fence to each other and they were like 60 centimeters apart and yeah. i was like no i mean that's it you've got to you've got to you know create stand, that yeah. gap yeah you have to think that about safe it. gap i but, like round yeah. here there was um in someone's front garden there was a kitchen stool uh just plonked outside their garden outside the kitchen window. The window so like people could sit there and chat to her through the window yeah. which is probably the safest way to do it yeah or be on work. the phone obviously that would yeah work. but you can yeah. still see each other yeah. yeah yeah exactly there's, there's lots of little things like you say there's things you can do you know okay, but also i would say as well take time out just for yourself which I, it sounds yeah. silly because saying that you're isolated and you could be on your own but what i mean is actually physically sit down turn everything off and just have some quiet time with just yeah. your own thoughts and just let yourself you know sit with this because this is major <laughs> yeah you know i i'm not somebody who's ever really had any mental health issues i'm quite lucky in that sense but for that first after that first 10 days i was starting to feel a bit like i don't know if i can do this this is stressful this was really like getting to me because i was like i want to see my friends i want to go out i want to see people mm. how and i don't know if I'm this help, for three it? months you know and then they start talking about six months and a year and you're just then all of a sudden the anxiety is like i can't do a year there's yeah. no way on this planet I can do a year, you know. So I would say, yeah, just take some time out, you know. If well, you've got weren't one, uh, Amanda, Google, didn't you, Amanda, didn't you read about that this was kind of the um, the seven stages of grief? 
Mm. That a lot of people five, are dealing five with the obvious, group, but yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I added some because that's just the way. Because you're, you because you're, like you've got anxiety, seven. so you've there got more. Be seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add you. I'll find you too. But no, no, it is. I think you know we're we're mourning our previous life um, and the way things were. And I think uh, I was saying I'm mourning the world because people are passing away. And yeah, well, absolutely. Of death around us. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think the thing is, the sooner you can get yourself to acceptance, the better for you. Um, I think a lot of people for a quite long time were worried about, you know, oh, I'm not going to be able to go to a restaurant. I'm not going to be able to go to cinema and I don't want to be at home. And it's like, yeah, well, that's terrible. But thousands of people are going to die and you are going to be stuck at home whether you like it or not. And this is just the way things are. No one can turn it off. There's no easy solution. It's going to go on yeah. for a very long time. There will be a second bounce. You know, there's going to be all this. The sooner you can get yourself to acceptance and just saying like, right, OK, I've got that. I've accepted that. I don't like it, but I've accepted that's what yeah. life looks like now. I think the better for your own mental health. And that sounds very easy, I know, but you know, it's just a mental process that we all need to work through. Some people will take less time, some people will take more time, some people might not even get to yeah. that point. But mm, yeah. if you can do that, it's better for you. Because I think if you constantly turn on the news on and having the new shock of how many people are dying, how many more restrictions there are, how little food there is in the supermarket. It's just constant making you panic. If you just say, well, this is my new normal now. I'm not able to go out. I might not be able to go out for another month, another two months. This many people are going to die. There's going to be a bit of rationing in the supermarket. So I'm going to change my diet a little bit. If you just accept things, it should make it a little easier in this yeah. really shitty time. <laughs> Yeah. Again, easier said than done, but tr I think yeah. trying is. is a very good start. It is. Yeah. I use so like Google and Alexa are quite good. You can go on there and ask them to do like a guided meditation or you know something that just play some chilled out music, just yeah. chill and just and like allow say, yourself just, to feel things. I think, like you said, like yeah, allow yourself to have a good cry. Like, actually, I feel, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, cry or just like I want to have a good cry every now and then because oh yourself. look ah. Oh. Or I'm not cuddle. seeing her because I go and see her when she makes noise. <laughs> oh, cuddle. I mean, on this call, not always. Oh, there he is. Oh. Hey, Bruno. Here he is. <laughs> he is there he I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think if you, if you need to, if you feel like you're, you know, you're upset, you're sad about this, have a good cry about it. You know, it's not going to, not going to hurt. No. not going to hurt to let that emotion, get it out of your system, whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm and just and just yeah. try and make yourself feel better about it because like you say you have to we have to accept this this is what it is you know and so you know yeah, and a lot if of we're lucky like, we get through it without any it ever touching us but yeah. you know yeah and and like I, like i said before we're trying to keep to a schedule i mean it definitely like a caveat for and you said this amanda about being kind to yourself like a, a lot of our colleagues who are writers are saying that they can't be creative because they're so worried, they're worried that their mums are going to get it, or they're going to get it, or just like, but the world is changing, everything is changing around us. So if you can't write, or if you can't work, or if you can't do something, do be kind to yourself. I guess what I'm saying is just kind of try to keep to a schedule if you can, because even though it feels like mm. crap, it will keep you more sane. Yeah. That is what I'm learning, kind of dealing with anxiety and depression, but yeah. it does help. I think like with the schedule as well, like, like Claire was saying, that schedule could be, you know, learning a language or doing some painting or something like that. So I think, you know, schedule, um, mm -hmm. with, I mean, if you are working from home and you do have tasks you can complete, like, you know, your company needs you to man the phone line or whatever, that's going to make life a bit easier for you. But if mm -hmm. you're a creative or if you can't work and you're now finding yourself with long days with nothing to do, then schedule in some way something. And I think, you know, whatever you can manage to do, even if even if that is, you know, scheduling in just an hour of television time so you don't sit and watch television, you know, from the second the you time. wake up until yeah. the moment you go to bed with breaks for popcorn, which sounds yeah. great, but will make your mental <laughs> health just decline. Well, it's all right for that, that first few days, you think, yes, no work, yeah. Holiday. fabulous, this is great. But like you say, after three or four days of it, you're like, oh, yeah, what am I going to do now? Yeah. You know, and then, you know, and to say three weeks is the initial time period that we're, we're locked down for. That's still quite a long time. If you went on holiday for three weeks and were told to sit by the pool 
even after two weeks of that, you'd be starting to think, I might want to go home now. Yeah. Because it's a long period of time. And yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and the other thing as well is there's lots of people doing a lot of helpful stuff online. You know, people are, I don't know, dropping the prices on their books so that you can read more. There are people, I, I just signed up for a, a sign language course, which is normally like a hundred and something pounds. And Stacey Stockwell, one of my followers. So just to I'm clarify, gonna, you know, Claire, back, that was, that's Stacey, yeah. Stacey Stockwell? Stockwell. And she's but doing it for Stockwell. how much was it? It's about 19, 19 quid plus fat, I think it was, something like that. So, you oh, know, okay. give, her a, give her a follow. She's quite good fun as well. So, um, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's people got are doing drawing classes. And yeah, I people like. are doing so much. I, you know, I think, uh, to be honest, I think if you're bored, you're just not spending quite enough time online looking for things. The National Theatre rolled out uh, One Man, Two Governors last night. And I think that's going to be Android an on-demand. Weather. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the National Theatres, everything the they're musicals. doing will be on, on demand for seven days. So yeah, if you missed I the think... live show, live show last night, yeah, you can do that. Um, there's there's so much, there's so much stuff. Yeah. Um, but we should probably wrap up soon. So mm. just one last thing. The thing that you didn't realise that you were going to miss, and is now the big thing that you miss the most. So, for me it's a hairdresser because I'm realizing I, I got my hair cut when the disaster was starting, but we hadn't been locked down. So I was okay. But I think with another two, three weeks of this, I'm going to just like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do well. So, so M, what's the one I'm thing that I'm going to cut your hair? Yeah. I think you probably will end up cutting my hair actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I was going to give her a bowl cut, which I'm looking forward to just getting like a little bowl out and go, <laughs> I, I put on Facebook today, I said, like, when we all come out of this, all our hairdressers are going to wonder what the fuck we've done with our heads. And I think there's going to be a lot of hairdressers going, I can't fix this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to go with it. I mean, I'm quite lucky because mine is normally cut at, like, 0 0.5. I mean, it's like virtually nothing. So I can yeah. probably get another good two weeks out of this. It'd be all right. Yeah, I, I think you've up. got a style there that's gonna that's gonna imagine Emma's yeah. growing hers out, but me with my stupid short haircut. That's I not don't know what's short. going on with mine. Yeah. All right. So Emma, what what's what's the thing that you uh, that you didn't know you were gonna miss as much as you do? Junk food. <laughs> uh, the other night I was like, oh, KFC. I was like, you can't have KFC. And normally I'd be like, oh yeah, health-wise, no, you shouldn't have KFC. Okay, put it out your head, you're fine. But now I was like, no, I really want my greasy chicken. And it's just like really depressing. Because the only junk food I think we can get at the moment is like pizza. And I don't want pizza. So I'm just like, no. no. Just weird cravings for things I can't get, which I know is all psychological because I can't get mm. them. But yeah, I'm, I'm craving things to eat, which is you know, pretty bad for someone eating this amount of chocolate. Yeah. But and that's not even all the chocolate you're eating, let's be honest. No, 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 it's not. No. <laughs> it's sadly not. Okay, Claire, what's the what's the thing you miss the most? <sighs> Human beings touching me. <laughs> I, oh. I never thought I'd like I never thought that would be bothered by that, but I do I really miss like just a hug. No. I have yeah. huggy for the time. I, I get that. And you know, and now it's like me and Mags, and we were like, no, for two weeks, we're just not going to touch each, we're not going to go near each other, just in case we've got it and we spread it. Yeah. And so, like, I think, you know, we've hugged once in the last week, and it's like, it was the best thing ever, and it's like, you know, <laughs> just want to be hugging people. Aww. I'm going to be like a little hug monster when I come out of here. Yeah. You are, you are. You're going to gonna... gonna... get it. I'm going to be like, no, I'm not letting go of you. Let come back. Yeah. Random people in the supermarket. I'm just, I'm just start yeah. up a kissing booth at the front gate. I don't care. I'm like, anyone, I'm happy. To, I'll have it. Come on, bring it on. Just, yeah, supermarkets. I'll be like, oh, I can stand next to you now. Look, hello. <laughs> hello, strange person. Like, <laughs> <don't hurt." laughs> Everyone in don't Crawley, arrested. you see someone being very like physical. It's just Claire and she just needs a hug. She <laughs> doesn't need a anything hug. anything by it. Aww. No. No, it's not hidden, no. you. but yeah, that, that did surprise me. I was like, because hmm. I, you know, I didn't think I was that touchy feely, but I am. Oh, right. yeah, I, I am, but I've been kind of like telling Amanda, I was like, pet me now, like a little dog. So <laughs> I'm kind of surviving with that, Aww. right? Well. <laughs> 
that's it really no no what what are you missing that you didn't realize you'd miss amanda just that then we'll hairdresser that's a, okay sorry I, I wasn't listening thanks <laughs> <laughs> she was thinking about the chocolates I have. I was like, and you know what? And the KFC. Yeah, she she was going along fine. She got the KFC bump, and that was it. Yeah. Everything else just got ignored. There's there's three chocolates left. Like I, I can't get on with this. Do you do you want us to mention the chocolates you've got downstairs as well? It's cute that you think they're downstairs. Oh. <laughs> it's gone. But I think you can buy. I'm pretty sure. Oh, box of <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, Emma, you just need to go to Iceland and you can buy KFC buckets. <gasps> Boom. Okay, right. Yep, need to go to, to Iceland. Yep. Yeah. What, what's that tagline? Go. Mum goes to Iceland? I think it's Amanda goes to Iceland and buys you KFC in a bucket. Amanda goes to Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. My, my sugar mother goes to Iceland and get me chicken. <laughs> Just get any old chicken coated stuff from any supermarket, you'll be alright. No. She's already chips. done that, it doesn't taste the same. She tried, mm. it doesn't taste the True. same. I tried, I've tried. She did. Oh, look, you see it. Bruno, Bruno's at Liz. True. There he is. I can see little Liz. Oh. <laughs> Bruno! <laughs> oh, look, he's turned around. He's like, let oh. me out. <laughs> let me out, strange people. Ben I want to be a Right, okay, so I need to go and let Bruno out. It's the only thing I've got on my yep. schedule all day, but I'm I need to go and finish doing some work. Oof, well, I, I can care my chocolates. Today. Right, so we'll say goodbye to everyone. We hope everyone's well, and we'll speak yep. to you all soon. Be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. Bye -bye.